Hello. Like the production possibility curve or production possibility frontier that we discussed in earlier lessons, the circular flow model is another one of those general models in economics that can be used for both microeconomics and macro. Today I'm going to be illustrating the use of the circular flow model to illustrate a set of microeconomic topics, and that, uh, that being product markets and factor markets. Before we get started on this diagram, we really need to define both product markets and factor markets. Product markets are when firms and households exchange goods and services for revenue. That's something that we face every single day, whether we're buying shoes or laptops or, or CDs or purchasing services like, like we do at McDonald's. Um, and factor markets. Factor markets is a little bit different. That, that's, that's when we're selling our labor, for example, if we're a worker in exchange for wages and, or in exchange for salaries. I'll get a little bit more to, to that in, in a moment. But let's illustrate uh, the two basic entities that exist in our circular flow model, the simplest form of the circular flow model, and those are firms and households. Firms are just a fancy word for businesses, and households is a, is a fancy name for families that do, live in dwellings, people like you and me. What's the set of exchanges that occur here? Well, the set of exchanges is actually fairly simple. Firms produce stuff. They produce goods and services. Goods are things that are tangible. Services are, are intangibles. Uh, for example, I pull, I pull into McDonald's and I'm actually purchasing the service of a meal, not having to cook myself and clean up after myself. What do we give firms in exchange for goods and services? Well, we give them money. We give them what we call that revenue uh, in, in, in economics. And collectively, all of these goods and services being exchanged for revenue is, is occurring in, th in things that we call product markets. And in microeconomics, we study a lot of product markets. There's a different set of markets as well, though, uh, called factor markets. We're going to diagram them up sort of on top of the circular flow model. Um, firms don't produce goods and services out of thin air. They need four factors of production in order to do that, four general things in order to produce, and that, that is land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Land, self-describing labor, uh, physical human work that's done in firms. Capital, uh, the things that firms need to produce that are non-human. So raw materials, sometimes it's a machine, sometimes it's a building. Uh, but anything that a firm needs in order to produce. In entrepreneurship, you need somebody to take a risk to organize and open up a firm in order to create job opportunities and ultimately produce goods and services. Clearly, households initially own all of these things, and they sell these, th these factors to firms, clearly not for free. They are expecting some exchange, and collectively we call these the factor payments. They are rent, wages, interest, and profit uh, so each of the factors are exchanged for a, f a specific factor payment. Land, the exchange for that is rent, uh, which we'll find out when we're in college. We, we rent a space in a dorm, and the dorm is on a piece of land. Labor, we're, as we're workers, we're literally selling our labor to a firm in exchange for wages or uh, a salary. Capital, the exchange for that is interest. Typically, capital is purchased. Um, the, by firms in order to produce more or expand um, or, or just produce it all. And a lot of times firms actually have to borrow that. And, and the exchange for borrowing is literally interest. The bank, bank it's what the bank charges us for the privilege of loaning, uh, being lent a, a lump sum of money. And entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is just a fancy word, I guess, for investors, and they're expecting to get back profit. So collectively speaking, uh, you now have a basic diagram of a circular flow model, and this can be used to illustrate the nature of product markets and the nature of factor markets, two things that we will be exploring in depth during our first half of this course, which is devoted to microeconomics. I hope you enjoyed that. See you soon.